What's up YouTube, my name's Rhett. I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur living here in Houston, Texas. And today I'm here to share my ultimate guide to setting up the most convenient and most secure two-factor authentication possible. For these two-factor authentication demos, I'm gonna be using Twitter to show you how to link your different two-factor authentication devices to an account. But to see a full list of apps that are compatible with two-factor authentication, I'll leave a link to the website down in the description. So go down below and smash the like button for internet security and let's level up your brains. What's up guys, Rep from the Future here, just editing the video right now and wanted to reorganize the topics that we talk about in the video just so that hopefully it provides more value for you guys that are watching at home. The first thing we're gonna cover in the video here is the full end-to-end -end system. So if you are just interested in finding out what the system is and then implementing it for yourself, stay tuned because that's gonna be coming next. Then I'm gonna be doing a live demo of how to use the different products in the system. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna be doing quick reviews of each part of the system so that hopefully you can adapt it if you need to, to your specific needs. So let's go ahead and just jump into the full system review. I'm using 1Password to create strong passwords so that hopefully I never end up having to use two-factor authentication in the first place. This is sort of my first line of defense to being hacked on any of my accounts. I'm not using two-factor authentication within 1Password because it seems like then if someone hacked my 1Password, they would not only get access to all my passwords, but they would have access to the two-factor authentication codes also, and that would sort of defeat the purpose of two-factor authentication. You're now fully authenticating with just my 1Password. And so so for my default mobile on-the-go two-factor authentication, I'm using the Authy app on iPhone. This method is gonna let me log into accounts on the go and I've turned off cloud syncing so that my two-factor authentication codes are not exposed to the internet. But I do like that cloud syncing feature so that if you do ever need to move devices, you can cloud sync and then cut off the connection with the cloud when you're done syncing. I have the YubiKey 5C Nano, this really small device for my at-home two-factor authentication. It's much faster than going through my phone and using Authy to log into my different accounts, I can just tap this and it will help me log in. And then finally, as my backup device, I've got this YubiKey 5C, just regular version, USB-C, and this is going to sit in a safe or in a safe deposit box somewhere separate from my house where I can go get this if I ever need to get it in the future. And then obviously, if you sign up for any new accounts between the time that you put that in a safe and the next time you go to get it, you're going to need to update that device with whatever those new accounts are. So make sure that you can do some sort of like yearly or quarterly maintenance on that device to make sure that it's always up to date. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be using Twitter for these two-factor authentication demos. So the first thing you're going to do here on Twitter specifically is down in the more right here, you're gonna click on settings and privacy, and then you'll go to security and account access, and then you'll click on security. And a lot of websites just like this are gonna have a very similar layout. You'll end up going to more and then settings and then either security or privacy and safety or something like that. And so here we can click on two-factor authentication. And now I'm going to use use an authentication app. And my authentication app of choice is Authy, which you can see right here. So let's click on get started and we'll scan this code. And I'm gonna use my phone here to take this down again. Click on Authy here, face ID, add account, scan QR code, linking up on Twitter, gonna hit save. And so now I have the Twitter two-factor authentication available here on my phone. I'm gonna copy this two-factor authentication code from Twitter. It didn't copy correctly here, so I'm gonna have to type it in manually. Two, nine, one, and I'm gonna click confirm. And so then again, it's gonna give me a single use backup code to put in a safe place. And then I'll put my webcam back up here. All right, so that was great, but let's see now what it would be like to set up these two security keys, which are going to be a lot more secure and hopefully faster than that two-factor authentication that I just did with Authy. And again, if you don't understand two-factor authentication, you don't understand why these devices are better than just using Authy on your cell phone, I'll leave a link to that video for two-factor authentication up in the card. So definitely check that out if you're new to two-factor authentication. Next, let's go ahead and try this YubiKey 5C Nano. So I'm gonna plug this in just right here into my little, my USB-C extender. So I've got that plugged in. It's always going to be within my reach here and I'm gonna be able to click it whenever I need to. So let's go ahead and click on security key here within Twitter. Sync your security key. You can either insert the key into USB port of your computer or sync it over Bluetooth or NFC. Name your key and this will make it easier to keep track of multiple keys. So let's go ahead and get started. Click on add a key here. Click on okay. Verify my identity with Twitter. Pick an option. Add new Android phone or USB security key. Okay, so it didn't recognize 
the YubiKey 5 c Nano until I plugged it in directly to the computer there. So plugging it into the USB-C extender here didn't work. So let's go ahead. We plugged it into the side of the computer and we're gonna click on add a key again, USB security key. I touched the key there and now we're going to call this YubiKey 5C Nano and we'll click on next. You're all set and it gives me another single use backup code and I'll hit done. So that was pretty easy to set up. We did just have to plug directly into the computer. We couldn't plug it in to this USB-C extender here. And it actually showed me the same one-time password on the security key that did in the authentication app. So I didn't need to record that again. So next let's go ahead and set up this YubiKey 5C here. This is going to be basically the backup version of that really small one that we just did. And it's a good idea to set them both up if you have multiples like this. And I do recommend getting multiples. It's a good idea to set up the backup at the same time, just so that you don't have to go through all these steps again and find where on all these websites you have to set up your two-factor authentication. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, try this one just through the USB-C extender port situation here. It says, insert your security key and touch it. So it seems like this USB-C extender is not going to allow us to do that. So I'm gonna remove the first nano key and then plug in this bigger USB 5C key. So again, I don't have nails here, but this is this small one is a pain in the ass to remove. All right, guys, so you might be able to see here, I plugged in the USB 5C. I'm gonna click on add another key here. I'm gonna click on get started, add key, USB security key, and I'm gonna just touch the security key. It seems like you do actually have to touch it. Um, I didn't press any buttons or anything on it, but once I touched it, I was moved to this next screen here. So I'm gonna call this YubiKey 5C backup. I'm gonna hit next. All set, it's giving me the exact same single use backup code. So we're set up here on one two-factor authentication account with those three devices. All right, guys, so for a final test here, I'm going to sign in using the YubiKey 5C Nano that's just flush here against my MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna click sign in. I filled in my Twitter username and password. And so now from the time I click log in, let's see how long it takes for me to actually log in using the YubiKey 5C Nano. So log in. USB security key, and I'm gonna to just touch on the YubiKey 5C here. And there we go. No copy paste, that was full, hopefully real time. Maybe I sped it up. If I sped it up, you should see the total time that it took to log in there. It was much faster than logging in with the one-time password. I didn't have to get my phone down. I'm obviously recording with my phone, but there's just so many times, you know, maybe your phone's in another room. It's much more convenient, even if this is kind of far away, to just come over here and touch on this little button to authenticate yourself with Twitter or with whatever app you set this up with. Again, if we come up to the 2FA directory, this works with so many different apps. Let's say you wanted to use Facebook instead. You could come here to the 2FA directory that I'll have a link to down in the description. You could see that Facebook allows you to use SMS. It doesn't allow you to use phone call or email. It does allow you to use hardware tokens, so you're good to use the YubiKey there. And it does allow you to do temporary one-time passwords. Let's say you wanted to use you know, the Gemini cryptocurrency exchange. You can use hardware tokens. You can use software tokens like Authy. You can use SMS and you can check out their docs here. And so really, no matter what the the website is that you want to interact with on two-factor authentication. You can just type it into this 2FA directory for US or whatever your region is. You could go to a different country if you live somewhere else, and you'll be able to see what kinds of two-factor authentication are supported on these different websites. Next, I'm going to go ahead and review the different products that are part of this two-factor authentication security setup. And I'm going to give you guys an idea of where each one of these products fits into the overall system. The first service is Authy, and in this system, Authy is really going to act as our two-factor authentication on the go. Authy is my favorite app-based two-factor authentication because it has this ability to allow you to back up your two-factor authentication code to the cloud, which normally is not something that you want to do because it's not very secure to keep your two-factor authentication codes in something that's connected to the internet. Let's say you bought the latest iPhone and you wanted to transfer all your two-factor authentication codes from the old phone to the new phone. If they didn't come over for some reason during the normal conversion of one phone to the other phone, you can turn on the cloud-based backup on the one phone open up Authy on the other phone, download all the two-factor authentication codes, and then close the connection to the cloud. And now you have all your two-factor authentication codes stored just on this new device. Again, this is not a feature you should keep on all the time because it undermines the security of your two-factor authentication codes, but it is nice for device migration. The first device we're gonna talk about here is this YubiKey 5C Nano. It's this very small USB-C device that I demoed earlier. The best part about the 5C Nano is that it fits very flush against the side of your, in this case, my Mac 
MacBook Pro, but whatever laptop or computer you're gonna use this with. The other upside is that using this to do your two-factor authentication is much faster than having to pull out your phone and then either manually type in that code on your computer or rely on Apple's sometimes very finicky copy and paste feature to get the code from your phone onto your computer. Unfortunately, it is kind of difficult, as we saw earlier, to get this out of the USB-C port. And so I think if I was going to do this again, I would instead opt for the USB-C NFC version of the YubiKey as my sort of at-home two-factor authentication device. I would be uncomfortable leaving the house with something like this because I don't want my computer to get stolen while I'm at a coffee shop or something and then have this plugged into the computer and allow people to authenticate my accounts using one password and then this YubiKey that's already plugged into my computer. So I would only leave this in my computer while I'm at home. It's a very convenient way to log into your two-factor authentication. The next device we used was the YubiKey 5C. And this YubiKey 5C is gonna act as my backup two-factor authentication device. I'm gonna throw this either in a safe or a safe deposit box or something like that. And this is just in case I lose my original hardware key that's gonna sit in my computer all the time and I lose my phone. So a situation like this, you know, maybe your house burns down or something horrible like that. Any case where you need a backup, it would be good to keep this backup in a fireproof safe or away from your house in a safe deposit box or something like that. I like this as a backup because it is bigger than the nano version of the YubiKey 5C, which I think if I threw that nano in a safe, I might like never find it again because it is so small. And I got the NFC not enabled version of the YubiKey 5C for the backup because I don't want to like put this in a safe deposit box and then someone goes and like somehow NFCs my two-factor authentication through the safe deposit box or something. I think that that's like impossible. It would never happen. But I think that you really want your backup to be as like foolproof as possible. And then I went with USB-C instead of USB-A just because I think USB-C will be more ubiquitous in the future. Reasonable people could disagree on this and does it really matter? Probably not. But again, this is just about peace of mind and you know, pick whatever device you're most comfortable with basically for the backup. Finally, the other service that we touched on tangentially in this video that's gonna make your two-factor authentication overall a lot stronger because hopefully you'll never have to use the two-factor authentication in the first place is a service called 1Password. 1Password is a password manager just like Apple Keychain except it works across any kind of device. I like the idea that in the future if I get a Linux machine or if I have to use a PC for some reason, I can still use 1Password to log into all of my accounts. My favorite features about 1Password are how it generates complex passwords for me right off the bat and then it tells me if my passwords have been reused across any number of different accounts and it will tell me if my passwords have been exposed in any leaked password databases. I've used 1Password now for about four years and I can't recommend it highly enough. It's the very first piece of software that I'll install on a new computer when I get one because it gives me total peace of mind when I'm logging into all the different accounts that I set up across the internet. I think that if you're not using a password manager that because of 1Password, my Nike account is probably more secure than your bank account. So let that sink in for a minute and then when you're ready to make the jump, go down in the description and sign up for 1Password. Hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. If you guys do wanna check out YubiKey or 1Password, I'll have the relevant links down in the description. Comment down below if you guys have a different strategy for your two-factor authentication. And also let me know if you guys have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. Like the video if you learned something and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.